<laughs> hey everybody welcome to another wordpress friday hangout you know what day it is you know what time it is and you know exactly what we're doing we're hanging out we're in a post blue checkmark world victor everything's changing on after 420 and i'm a little bit disappointed we didn't do a 420 show you're right we probably should i have, know but... knowing you and me <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what that means but um <laughs> not saying anything but there's yeah, certain man, people but... who enjoy 420 how's uh how's everything going over there victory excited for the weekend any fun things going on i'm I'm going to new york city this weekend to hang on my friend who is in town for 420 from california as an official delegate representing marijuana br or sorry not marijuana cannabis brands that are expanding to the new york region so yeah wow. so i'm going to be in, i'm going to be in new york for 420 that's funny. I don't know why you'd leave California on 420, but <laughs> you know what's funny? They, you know what they all said to me? They said it's boring. We run into the same people. They said uh, it's, yeah. it's like it's I mean, just like WordPress, different. the biggest smallest you know industry in the world. They say the same thing mm -hmm. we do. It's the biggest smallest industry in the world. So yeah, and a big change we saw out there in Twitter world, right? The blue check marks are gone. So I uh, I didn't have a blue check mark, and I still don't. So I think my world's still pretty much the same. They have any impact over there? Although it's it. I still hate Twitter. The fact that every time I even try to tag you, Victor, like I at Victor, it's just. I think I'm shadow banned. People. I'm pretty sure I'm shadow know. banned. Uh, because I'm pretty sure I'm shadow banned. But like, because I had the parody and the rat. But you know what's funny, and it's actually kind of scary. And this, I think, for WordPress brands, and, and you know, we're getting to plugins and like plugin support, right? Um, the New York City gov. Someone made a fake government site and pinned to the top. This is now the official New York City government site. And then the actual New York City government said, no, you are not. This is the government site. And then everyone started making fake accounts and tweeting under them, saying like that they were the official government New York City help. And they'll think about that, right? Like 311 in New York City used Twitter as a feed. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that they shouldn't get that for that. They should get that 100 percent for free. But taking away a blue check mark just because they won't pay eight dollars. I don't know if that's the solution. <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, I see uh, Elon's out there giving random celebrities free check marks. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know, man. So who knows if anyone even sees our tweets? But um, here we are. Hopefully, you're catching us on YouTube. We got a fun show today. We got to do something a little bit different. So um, we're going to talk about WordPress plugins. Some of our favorites. Some of your favorites. We put the we put some tweet out tweets out there. So I guess some people did see us. Um, and we got some user submitted uh, of favorite plugins from different um you know different listeners and, and friends on twitter so we got a lot of plugins some of these i never even heard of and i think it'll be fun to do uh, a little bit of screen sharing i know victor you got your local setup so we can um you know kick the tire on a few of these plugins but we're gonna give you recommendations of plugins we like we use um you know tried and true plugins um as well as some that we're not as familiar with but others are and are, are definitely recommending so i think we're all gonna learn some stuff today which is gonna be a lot of fun Plugins yeah. are fun, man. Over sixty, over sixty thousand plugins currently on WordPress.org, and you can imagine who knows how how many are out there, just freely available on GitHub and other places as well. And and that doesn't even account for all the premium side, all the paid plugins. So there is, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of plugins out there in the world. You know, and there's a lot of options, a lot of plugins that could try to do the same thing or similar things. It's big decisions you got to make when you're picking plugins for WordPress. How right. do you do it? And I and I think the other thing too is what I what I love about WordPress. And sometimes, look, I know I talk a lot of I talk a lot of nonsense about WordPress, and sometimes the people around WordPress. But the beauty and the one thing I'll argue with, and I agree, sometimes sucks for developers, right? Developers are like, why won't WordPress make co Composer by default? People should not be able to install plugins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In my opinion, plugins are the killer feature in WordPress. Right. That com that make it different from other CMS because there's so many plugins out there. You can, you know, and I'm and I think that's the only removing that ability would mm. make WordPress not competitive. In my opinion, it's up to the developer to educate people who use the website, say, hey, we're going to stop you from installing plugins because now you're writing, you know, you're a bullet flying a thousand miles an hour. We should not be arbitrarily just putting things on there. Right. Mm. But for this and like you heard Brad say. I set up a local environment. So we're do, and this is what I would recommend. When you get new plugins, get local WP. It's free to use. Pull down your website. It, and actually, I think local WP is a great job. It works with WP Engine Flywheel. They're even making it work with other hosts that aren't owned by them. Um, and there's other uh, you know, um, plugins for that. You can play with it. And you can't do this in any other tool. Like you can't do this craft CMS. Can't do this any other you know, mm -hmm. strappy CMS. This is something we're doing unique to WordPress. And now 
I like to say we're putting our enterprise thought on it, right? What you're saying, you know, Brad, when you and I worked together at the Wall Street Journal, the first thing I did was meet with the CTOs and I said, you don't get to pick plugins. You get to ask us for a plugin and then we go shopping with mm -hmm. our mindset, which is do they donate? And this is before we even get into the demo. My thing I look for is do they contribute? Like if it's like, you know, foo foo fee foo um, from Timbuktu and they just launched a plugin, they have one developer, they never contributed, no one I know, they don't have presence on Twitter, they don't have presence anywhere, I'd be cautious to use that, right? I'd want to do a code review, I'd want to, you know, check certain things. But if it's someone like, hey, like CPTUI built by a very reputable WordPress agency, right? Um, and it does a major functionality WordPress, it doesn't add advertisement, it doesn't add dependencies. Oh, it also has versioning so I can like hard code things. And by the way, it's made by this guy named Brad from WebDesk Studio. So that's like pimp Brad out, but CPTUI, that he was sounds exactly, like a cool guy. Yeah, no, and that and that that but that plugin that meets for me what works for your organization, right? And I mm -hmm. don't want advertisements and stuff in my sites. And so that too, like what is the speed, you know, and we're not getting into that, but like one of my favorite plugins, Query Monitor, tests other queries from other plugins. So we might cover on some of that too. So hopefully. You're getting a lot of gold and value as we go through yeah. this. It's not just installing plugins. We're going to speak aloud of how we think about these plugins. You know, I remember you mentioned um, about how it's one of the benefits, big benefits of WordPress is just the plugins and the ecosystem. I remember years ago uh, having a, a, a good uh, uh, conversation with uh, this Drupal bro that. Um, <laughs> bro. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like I know, the yeah, Drupal yeah. bro. That guy, um, yeah, that guy, and his number one like pushback on WordPress and why it was an awful platform was how easy it was to install plugins. I'm like, you know, there's ways to like limit that, and there are ways to yeah. kind of lock that down. It doesn't mean everybody can just like install whatever they want, and there's no way to stop that or have some kind of control over that. I'm like, so to say, that's the number one reason why it's an awful platform. I was like, you're just looking for reasons to hate WordPress, dude. But um, but yeah, I mean, there's, again, I, I love everything you're talking about, like testing things, you know, looking at, uh, who's behind it, you know, it doesn't mean a plugin with a few hundred downloads is necessarily bad, but, um, you know, it just means it probably hasn't really been tested in mass. Right. So depending on what the feature or features are that you're looking for, um, uh, probably depends on the amount of risk you're willing to accept. Right. I doubt you'd want to launch an e-commerce plugin or add an e-commerce plugin on your website that has a hundred active users. That's very risky, probably got a lot of issues. It's very early on in the development cycle for that plugin, but you know, maybe a plugin that does something very simple is, and only has a few hundred installs is fine. Right. Um, so you do have to kind of put the context around what it is. And, and like you said, do your due diligence. So, um, and if you don't know, ask, this is a very open and welcoming community. So if you're looking for recommendations and tried and true plugins and ones that people really swear by, just ask, like, look, at, you're going to see a lot of the plugins we got today just from asking. So, so let's, uh, let's jump into it. How do we want to do this, Victor? You got to, you know, do you want to talk about some of the plugins we really swear by? We want to go into some of the user submitted plugins where you want to start? Uh, let's start with you. Cause you have some of the, I see some of yours in here and some of those are premium so I think I don't think Gravity Forms has a non-premium version, right? No, Gravity Forms is all premium, but Gravity yeah. Forms is definitely one of my one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, I love um, it. So I'll, I'm going to have to go in another one. Let's get started. Well, let's do this. I'm going to share my screen, mm -hmm. and actually, uh, we could start with that. Let me go. I'm going to share my screen, uh, and we're going to do Firefox. Okay, cool. So um, live demos, baby. Live this is demos. Go Here we go. No, you know what? Hey, <laughs> it's WordPress, so it's not. I'm not coding. I'm no coding, yeah. right? So, okay. So I set up a little be fine. Phone. Do not do this. It is my username and password or WordPress, WordPress. But what okay. I love about you'll see my URL is wpfriday.test. I like local WP because the one thing too is like local WP. Some of these plug not plugins, but some of these local environments they use weird numbers, etc. And if it's not a real URL, some of the plugins don't like that. And so that's why I do like local WP. Um, it does domain mapping locally automatically. Oh, um, and honestly, if you, if you start to run those type of challenges, it could also indicate that the plugin is built in an incorrect totally. way Correct. or not the WordPress way because it should work. No matter what, whether you're local host, no matter what you have, it should work, right? So I, I agree with that. And so, yeah, and so, and then, so when I do demo sites to kind of play around, I just want to share two plugins that really kind of help me out. So I use um, one plugin called Instant Images. Um, and so Instant Images, what I love about this plugin is when I go and add images, 
it not only doesn't take notice, there's not all these insane, um, which I'm like, oh my God, these guys, like they're being so polite with what a nice plugin. Um, it adds one menu item. It doesn't add it to the, the main menu. Again, like I hate when things, and the Brad, this is something, you know, back to our, how we pick things. I do not like plugins that are a supplementary or a small plugin that add themselves to the primary menu. Yeah. Like, so instant images adds itself. Hey, good. You're in the media library. So I can go to instant images and say, I'm working on a site, the site that I set up, I'm going to just call it like Brooklyn, right? Like I'll type this in, say, I need some Brooklyn images, right? I search in there. I'm going to go, I click it downloads the image, adds it to my media library and automatically adds the alt tags, automatically adds the caption, the credit, and it adds it as a awesome. optimized image. Now, are these like uh, license, the, like freely licensed, or what's yep. the situation Unsplash, there? Openverse, Pixabay, or oh, Pexels. Wow, wow this, and is, so, this is nice. Oh, it's a nice one. And so, and so again, it doesn't take over the site. The mm -hmm. way they get you is they want you to. Uh, there's like an upgrade, like they get you with like um, different stuff. But you can set all these. Look at this. All these servers, Unsplash, you can get like your own images for like different mm -hmm. API keys. Um, automatically add attribution, media models. And that's where they try to get you with like some of the upgrades. So I like the way they do this plugin. I don't know if these guys actually are even, if they listen to us or, you know, connect, but you guys I've been using for like three years. Great job. Um, okay. Next thing. I can uh, see some AI integration coming to that plugin at some oh, point, right? Like exactly. So when you first start the site, it starts at 2023. I don't want to get into FSE just yet. So I use 2021 and then I install one other plugin. Um, and this, again, these are my two plugins that get my site started. I install Twent TIG. And what Twent TIG allows is I go to customize. And I'm going to go to starter sites. And now I'm going to go to, let's just use something like Kingston. We'll use that as a start. I hit load, import all. I hit publish. And now we have a site ready to go. So now that's the number one thing when you're demoing. And that's a lot of people, they install plugins in a raw install. Um, WordPress, when you start, it just has sample page, uh, sample post. That's not really useful for testing plugins. So now we have images, we have content. Um, we have all this stuff to see as we're installing this plugin, what is going on, right? Um, and so that's why I really, and again, we're just using core WordPress um, and, and all 20, TIG does is install some basic patterns and stuff. Um, so I really like to use this plugin for that reason. Let's look at a right. plugin called Brad. All right, like is that is that in there? So we talk about plugins that do one thing very well. Is so it if you really search a here? plugin and right. just search Brad, B R A D. I thought it was a joke. This is a very helpful plugin created by Aaron Jorben. All right. Well, it is Here kind we of go. a joke. <laughs> But it's actually not a bad plugin. Now go back to your dashboard. We well, yeah, activate it and go back to your dashboard. So Brad stands for Better Responsibility Around Discoverability. Did you know that was an acronym? I did not. Aaron's a very creative, clever guy. So now go back to your dashboard. Go back to my dashboard. Yeah. So um, let's see if you have. Oh, maybe you didn't set it. So basically, what this plugin does is if you if you have the uh, the no index setting on. Okay which maybe you don't have it on. You oh, might check that setting. If no you have it on, it makes search. that it makes that warning a little bit more prominent in your face to say, hey, you're you're, you're telling search engines to go away. Um, Sorry, that's all it does. My, my work assistant, my work, you may not, people on the video may not see this. My work assistant is my dog. Just had to grab him real quick. So let's turn, <laughs> let's, by the way, let's by see default, if it still works. I think it does turn that on, discourage. Uh, by default, it, I, I don't remember if it's on by default or not. It might Where is it? General or reading? Reading, I think. There it is. Discourage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if I check turn that, on, save okay. it, then go back to. So right now, it's always it was always a little bit buried. Um, oh, I like that. So this little notice right here. Yep. This and you can see popular. WordPress adds that search engines discourage, which you know it's there and it's gotten a little bit better. But at the time when they released this a few years back, and it was a bit of a joke with Aaron, um, and I think Norcross, Andrew Norcross, was working on it, but. At the time they did it, it was actually not, it was very kind of obscure, like just plain text. And it was like, you just couldn't, it wouldn't be obvious to many users that, hey, this is on. And this is, we've all done this, right? You launch a website, you launch a WordPress site and you forget about that setting, right? And then like a day later, like, oh my God, I'm telling search engines to go away and I don't want to do that. Um, and the nice thing is, is if you're using a proper SEO plugin, it does this too, right? Like Yoast SEO is our go-to at WebDev. Um, and Yoast SEO obviously will have, 
big warnings if you're telling the search engines <laughs> to go away. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it's not going to do anything if you're telling search engines to go away. So it's going to make that front and center. So you don't really need this if you have a really good SEO plugin in place like Yoast. Uh, but it is funny. It's yeah, I like the acronym. It's my name. It's cool. Brad, all 10 plus active installations. So here's a plugin that just does one thing, very, very simple, you know, low risk. <laughs> Chances are it's it's uh, not going to have an issue. And again, that's like to let you know, like not all plugins have to be amazing. Like you could mm -hmm. do, uh, and, and I'm going to show, all right, and then back to like, I'll do one more because Brad, I, if you want to, I don't know if you want to download like Gravity or no, WPL import, you had one in there too. We, I, how do we Yeah, we can that? just talk about these. We don't necessarily have to show yeah. off, but uh, WPL import, maybe pull up the website, uh, WPL import.com. So this is one definitely as you're getting into more professional projects, this is a game changer and it's been around for a long time. It's probably been around for like eight or 10 years at this point. Um, and I've talked about this for, you know, I mean, all the way back when I was on the, you know, doing the Dradcast, we were talking about this, uh, but this is just an, a really, really powerful plugin for importing data into WordPress. Yeah. Um, and it works with XML, CSVs, Excel files, massive, you know, large files that can bring in images. It's just, so from a content import or migration standpoint, many, this is a tool that can satisfy many of those requirements. Now, if you're doing a really large custom migration, this may not get you all the way there, right? But this has helped accelerate a lot of what we do at web dev around data, uh, working with our clients. Maybe they give us a spreadsheet, maybe they give us XML or something and say, we need to get this into WordPress. Awesome. We can work with this tool right here. It's very simple mapping to map that data over and import it and away you go. So really, really powerful tool, easily worth the cost if you just even use it on one project. So one that I highly recommend. I'll also say, um, and I don't, again, cause I, it's, it's too complex to really show, um, but they have a Google Sheets synchronization tool. So um, what a lot of people don't understand is that you can literally set it up. Uh, oh, they're now telling you to use Zapier. Okay, that's not, this is not the one I'm looking for, but essentially they have a, um, let me do WP all import Google Sheets sync. So um, do, 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 do. there's a guy, oh, it's funny. I got I should probably download this before the guy delete. He's on Blogger. I don't know why a WordPress developer is on Blogger, but this is bookmarked in my notion. Um, and so it, what you see here is he gets the URL in this article. He's getting the URL from uh, w, in, in, injecting in WPL import. And so as that sheet gets updated, it can ping WPL import to update the data or run on a cron job. Um, and so that's, I love WPL import nice. for that. So we'll do syncs for like, um, you know, if we don't want to pay for an Okta integration or we don't want to pay for like um, a job integration, we'll tell the client, if you could download a CSV and keep updating the CSV, it's a cheat. So we don't have to pay a thousand dollars a year greenhouse or whatever it costs. Right. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and then the job sync to like a job board that we have in the WordPress site. So it allows you to get around a lot of API integrations. And then here's another thing that we're currently doing or we're experimenting it now, now that it's in Google sheets, there's um, Google sheets for chat, uh, chat GPT or open AI for Google sheets. So um, WPL import, and I know like if Yost was looking at this, he might blast me for it because I know he's not a big fan of AI right now. Um, but like if you're open to it, right? Like Yoast SEO has an integration with um, WPL import. So arguably you could synchronize that to a Google Sheet. And if you have product description listings, you could be scraping your competitors' listings, comparing your listings and updating your listings with missing data based on that. Um, so yeah, so that's the power of WPL import. It's a wild. It's a wild world with some of these tools and how they can interconnect and, you know, just being able to hook it's especially things like Zapier, right? Being able to hook oh, yeah. in and, oh, and yeah. autom automate these different tools and how they communicate and work together um, yeah. outside of WordPress and within WordPress. So, um, and we're, you know, we're going to talk about some premium stuff and some free stuff. I think mostly free, but there are a few premium ones that are that are worth it. I'll throw another free one out there that this is an old school tool that I've used forever. And it's just a it's a nice one to have in your back pocket called Search Regex. Search regex. Search regex. So this is a find a, it's a very simple find a replace tool for WordPress. Um, oh, nice. And it can do actually regex patterns, hence the name. Uh, but it's at a base level. You can just search for content. I we used to use this all the time for um, you know going live with the with a dev site or staging site, or if uh, if we're involved with working on a website that had a lot of legacy content. Chances are there's some messed up you know links or URLs within your old content, and you can quickly find those things, find replace. Um, big disclaimer, 
take a really backup. Up Clearly, yourself. like you're yeah. messing with data directly in the database with this tool. Uh, it will let you preview what you're going to do because you can search right there and it won't actually replace anything until you hit that replace. So you can kind of preview and see what the results are going to look like and make sure they're in line with what you expect. Um, but again, once you run that, it's going to make those changes directly within the database and within WordPress. So um, 100% make sure you have a really solid backup before you start using a tool like this. But this is a really, really nice one for just find and replace. Similar, similar to that, and actually, it was bought. It was, it was, it was a little unknown plugin by Delicious Brains called Better Search Replace, and it was bought by WP Engine, and so now they're rolling it into um, Migrate DB. So if you see here, it's the same thing. You can search replace, yeah, um, nice, and it does allow regex, and then you can do this where run as a dry run, and it will warn you. So you see here, like our site right now is called. W so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for WPFriday.test. And I'm going to replace it with wpfriday.next. And again, like I'm not really doing that. It and allows Victor to breaks his entire local site. Break the site. <laughs> this is why you do it local, baby. All right. So I'm select. You can select tables, um, and I can do case insensitive. But by default, they're case sensitive. I'm going to do insensitive. Um, replace GUIDs, and it has a. And then I'm going to run as a dry run, and that's what I like about it here. Uh, when it runs the dry run, it lets you see where it would replace. And this is actually pretty good if you're like you oh, know. That's cool. Yeah, and yeah. the upgraded version, I don't know if it upgrades now. Oh, no, there's still you no. Know, so, see, that's what's so funny. I think they're killing better search replace and they're putting those features into WP Migrate, which is a premium plugin. And I think it's like $500 a year now. They're getting, I mean, they know the power. They, I think what they did, and I guess for anyone on the call here, if you're an entrepreneurial type person, there are some plugins like Brad and I just showed you W, um, this, you know, I, I notice how quickly Brad showed search regex, I showed this. And then someone at WP Engine said, there's money here. Let, and then they rolled it into WP Migrate, and now they're charging $500 a year. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this is, you know, to that point, these tools like, you know, what it's WP Migrate now, right? I'm so used yeah, to calling it WP pro, DB pro. Migrate yeah. Pro or whatever, I know, I know, uh, I know. which is another great one, right? WP Migrate allows you to easily kind of push and pull data and sync settings and, and, and even files to and from you know, your site. So you can imagine, you know, dev sites, staging sites, you could pull down the staging site directly to your local and within minutes, seconds, maybe depending on how big it is, have a exact clone of your staging site on your local and then make whatever changes you can push them back up. So that's a great one. But, but my point is like those tools um, have a lot of this fine replace in them, right? Like it's automatically when you push from your local up to whatever server, it knows it's going to, you know, map the URL and domain based on what you have set up on that current site, just like WP engines, you know, staging to production, you can switch things like there. And most hosts have this now where the tools are going to automatically do the find and replace on domains uh, as part of their process. So uh, not as that search regex and even this search isn't as, as, as necessary as it used to be with a lot of the tools out there, but it's always good to know because you might come up against something where it's like, Oh my gosh. There's, and what we see is a lot of this legacy garbage. we got to clean up from like old migrations that weren't done properly or, you know, they didn't get everything. And so we had to go back and clean things up. So, but yeah, love yeah. these tools and definitely check out WP migrate. If you're not familiar with it, that is again, if you're on the professional side, if you're doing, especially if you're, if you're doing selling WordPress, WordPress I think you need exactly. To use it. Like even, that's a tool even if you're, you need. Even if you're like, listen, and I'm not knock because like I see there was a tweet recently where someone's like, oh yeah, these big enterprise devs they love to knock page builders. Look, I'm knocking. I don't knock page builders if you're building for mom and pops, right? Like so, just like I knock page builders when it comes to scaling for large organizations, it just doesn't work. But for you know whether you're building for mom and pops or you're building for you know like big enterprise, W Migrate is a worthwhile investment. Even my friend uh, Cami, who goes by. Uh, what Cami WP, you know, she was with GoDaddy. Um, she, I helped her a couple of times where I said, listen, I know you want to, you know, one man army, 160 sites. I think she's up to 300 now. I was like, WP Migrate is going to save you time because you can pull local, debug, test, and then push public, you know, push up, pull, do whatever, do backups. So WP Migrate does so many things that are, and, and the other thing too, I love. So for example, certain, I think it's SiteGround changes the prefix on your database table, right? In the WP config file. Um, as a security thing. And what WP Migrate does, it's the only plugin that's like, hey, your prefix on your DB is different. So we're going to change that when we import or push or pull mm. between different environments. So yep. it actually fixes a lot of stuff that you as a lower level, uh, you know, as a nascent developer, or maybe you don't want to develop, it handles a lot of the code for you. So I'd argue it, it is codey enough for the coders, but no mm -hmm. code enough for people who need to get a job done. 
I got another very useful tool, but uh, more of an unknown one. And there's probably others that are similar, but um, it's called Maintain Tools. So the Maintain is a, a company we we sold off over to SiteCare, SiteCare, our support and maintenance um, arm at the time. But uh, Maintain Tools, the reason I like it, it's not really a maintain only thing, but it's a really nice utility. Um, and what it allows you to do, let's go ahead and we'll just show it off here activate it. It gives you some nice tools. So look right there on the plugin screen. You can see we have a notes column, right? So this gives you a couple things. Oh, you can lock a like plugin that. from updating. So if there's a reason you can't update a plugin, and we've all been there, right? You're working with a client, they've modified somebody modified this plugin, the whole site's dependent on it. We can't touch this until we get around to fit, you know, rebuilding it or figuring it out. Lock it. That way it won't force an update. It won't tell you there's updates. Um, you can also add notes and so then you can add a note on why you can't actually, why you don't want to update this, you know, like, oh, we can't jump from this version to that version because it's going to impact something else that someone may not be aware of. So it's a nice utility. Um, and also if you go to maintain, which is a top level menu, I know you love. <laughs> I mean, um, no, in this case, if this is for the maintenance of a site, I would argue top level is fine. It's when yeah. it's something that it was like, if it was just like. And that's where, like, you know, it's better search replace. They put themselves under tools because mm -hmm. it should. Why would I need to search regex on a yeah. daily basis? And this yeah. maybe could go under there, but check out uh, site health. There's a couple other tools in here, I think. Are... And again, if you're working with clients, uh -oh. Uh, oh, we got a bug. We got a bug. We're going live. Um, yeah, magic. Actually, works. that integrates with SAS. That's actually site health. So back up. Sorry. Can you go back to maintain tools? Uh huh. I don't know what's going on there. Check out um, site scanner. Uh, and then you can check your core files and make sure they haven't been compromised. And then under tools, um, again, you can uh, decide if you want these uh, the features enabled or not. And then I think, is it support? Or maybe it was under site health. There's there's also one final thing on here, which I like, which is a, uh, it might be busted under that. Just go back to about and scroll down. We'll have to see. But anyways, uh, it, what it does is gives you like a, a summary of your site, plug and installed everything, and then you can punch in an email address and it will email it to you. So if you're if your client's having a problem, you can be like, install this plug in, put in my email, send it to me, and then it will kind of give you a download of um, how your site's set up, essentially. So, Interesting. yeah, I don't know what's going on there. That's an issue. But, you know, live demos are fun. We're no longer yeah. actually maintaining. This is has been transitioned, but it's an interesting tool, especially for the locking and notes piece of, of plug in updates. But see, I feel like this kind of stuff, if you're a smaller agency, right, this is great because yeah. as a smaller agency, you could like, and that's the other thing too. This is the beauty of WordPress. You just said you're not maintaining it. Okay, Brad. Well, I could, if I have an agency, you know, if I was GoWP and look, I'm not saying other agencies, should, but there's another agency, GoWP, right? If I was on GoWP's, uh, let's say development team and, and, um, uh, I'm, my brain is melting right now, but the owner of GoWP, we know each other. I'm so sorry. Um, white hair, like we're, Atlanta, we're in Atlanta. We're always hanging out. The, the owner of GoWP, if he were to say to me, hey, Victor, what, what should we work on next? I would say, hey, I need to add an interface for our guys to work in the system or guys and girls to work in the system. So I, I could fork this plugin. I go, look, our competitor has this plugin. It looks pretty good. Let's fork that. And that's the beauty of WordPress. Like you can kind of like borrow from other people. And so, and so that too, don't think about just installing plugins. If you don't like a plugin, fork it and change it, man. Like change make it. a better version. I mean, that's yeah. how I learned to build plugins. I started hacking Hello Dolly, you know, 15 years ago and changing yeah. the lyrics. And that there was cool. And then I could visually see the changes. And then I ripped out the lyrics and, and hooked up an RSS reader so I could push updates via RSS to a, you know, to an external dashboard in WordPress. So like just hacking away at some plugins that are out there is a great way to learn. And and then you start to get more comfortable doing exactly what you just said, Victor, like go in there, fork it, start tweaking it, make it custom for you um you know again it's open source it's all gpl so as long as you give a proper attribution you know back to the original authors you're good to go yeah so I have let's another... see we got some other ones here yeah what do let's we got call... for the audience let's, let's look see. at brandon dove sent out this is an interesting one so it's called cc devs cc okay, space devs this is a free plugin um and this is a john hawkins and todd Huish plugin two well-known members of the community there it is. Yep. So this plugin, oh. uh, this is a grin, a, another one for builders. If you've ever created a client site, right? And you put your email as the admin, we've probably all been there and yeah. you're getting these email notifications and, and maybe for a site, you no longer support because they never changed it to their own email. Um, this is actually a way you can kind of get ahead of that. 
um, uh, and it basically allows, it adds a field to the general settings page where you can add a comma separated list of emails who would, should receive copies of the admin emails. Um, and then it also lets you unsubscribe. So even if you get kicked out, even if you're no longer working with that client, if you're getting these emails, you can unsubscribe and, and remove it. So, um, it gives you a, a better way to kind of get these emails during active development, um, and support, but then also getting off the emails when you're done working with that website. So kind of a clever one. Cause I, I still get emails today from clients we've had 10 plus years ago that had my email on it and I've emailed them, try to get changed and it just doesn't happen. So I just set up a filter to get rid of them. But so yeah. where is that? Cool. Cause I'm under settings, admin email. Is it under, how do I get to that? Let me go. To it should screen. be under, yeah, it should be under uh, general CC devs under general settings, settings. general it huh, looks like I there's don't... a dev uh keep going is there like that? a admin email Maybe the bottom. Sure. there it is oh it's on the bottom okay okay comma separated list of email addresses so you would okay. set up the primary as the client from day one right and then you would add victor and brad here as the dev so we're getting the emails during development and then we're done we can remove ourselves directly from the email we can unsubscribe which would remove say... us from here I will say the one thing that, and again, this is how you know, it's like, it's open source, it's community. When these plugins are built, right? This is, because like CC devs, if I, you'd have to explain that, what this means to a developer. Yeah. Like I know it says add a comma separated, but it's funny because I was thinking about this, I was like, man, this actually makes sense because whenever I use a lot of vendor, like these big enterprise tools, like an Amplitude, a Segment, Adobe, AWS, et cetera, they always have primary contact, technical contacts, support contacts, like all mm -hmm. these different contact emails. So you could fork this plugin and have different, you know, a, and that's something too, to think about, like you could set this up. And, and again, these, what's so funny about WordPress, and I, I guess I'm putting my business hat, this is a selling point for clients. Like you could say like, hey, like our version of WordPress, like you're not, don't worry, we have a separate, we could put your developer as the primary contact here so it doesn't get lost. Whereas other WordPress sites, it's going, your, your admin emails are going nowhere. Um, mm -hmm. So that is like, again, as a builder or as a, a yeah. pro, like you could sell this as a functionality. Yeah, this is like classic dev tool, right? Like, like to your yeah. point, it's not, it's not super polished. It's not yeah. like, you know, this, this amazing like UX, but it's a very functional dev tool and, and, it's, oh, yeah. and it helps, it solves a problem that many of us have, have gotten into, which I love. So can always dress it up, but the, the idea is like, just the functionality is pretty cool. That's a good one. Thanks yeah. for sharing, Brandon. What do we got next? All right, I got one, another one from Carol Stombaugh, uh, WP Dashboard Notes. You know what's fun about asking for plugins? You hear about so many you've never heard of before, and I'm like, these are kind of cool, and I've never heard of them. WP Dashboard WP Notes. Dashboard so um, this is very helpful if, if you have multiple people, um, you know, either multiple users, writers, editors, you know, builders, whatever, but basically multiple users within the dashboard. Um, it allows you to make notes, right? So you can um, write within the dashboard. They can be colored. Uh, different colors they can be lists they can be regular notes public private you're, you're working on them right on the dashboard um drag and drop oh. items that auto save so it's just kind of a way to say hey this is what i'm working on maybe there's a checklist of things that need to get done within the website or whatever uh, i don't know if you get a i don't know how to configure it i'm assuming there's Work, monomate, you could do the dashboard notes create beautiful notes so i'm in the dashboard i have site yeah. health at a glance Quick draft, events and news. I don't see, and then I went to screen options. Huh. Huh. Let's go to the plugin. Let's go to the plugin page. So if I go here, uh, view details. And if there's like a screenshots. There is an a there is a add note button located in the top admin bar, it says. Do you see that? New note somewhere. I oh, not. I see it. Top oh. right, new note. There we go. All right. Hey, you know, we could have like a UX show here where we just talk about user experience. I know. This is this live is user great. testing. I do not like this. I, this is not great. Yeah, I think it's one of those things once you do it once, you're good to go with that first time uh, a little bit. Uh, a little no, but this is like for me as like someone, again, work. think about this. And this is the one thing I would, I would implore. Um, a lot of people in WordPress do not work outside of WordPress. And the problem is that they're getting left behind, right? And like, if you go and speak with like, when I, a lot of people don't know this, but I used to study film, right? And I studied under a person named Judith Weston. And she actually, you know, had me in some of like her best like classes. And I worked under this guy, Michael Beckett. And they were, they worked on like, um, all like the Pixar movies, et cetera. And the one thing they would tell every major director that we worked with, right? Was stop watching movies. 
go live life, go learn from other people, go to dinner, go to Italy, go to Japan, go to Africa, go learn about people. Right. And so when I was at the journal, when I would work with WordPress agencies, Brad included other agencies, I would, I would get livid when they would come to me with a WordPress example. And I would say, I know WordPress can do it. I didn't ask you that. I asked you, how are we going to do this? And let's look at the way the market's doing it, right? Because that's the one thing, like nowhere else in the world, if this is the dashboard, why would I look in the admin toolbar, right? And so like, that's the one thing I think a lot of people forget is like, if you look outside of the WordPress ecosystem, dashboard should go in dashboard, admin bar is another thing. And so it's like trying to think like, where in the world would you see add a note in a completely different section than where it's supposed to be? So that that's like, I'm getting, I'm going on a UX rant, UI rant, but developers, please go see how the yeah. other world works. You know, it would be nice is like, just have that dashboard widget have there widget. and then click a yeah. big add, add your first note button right there. Yeah, so it's right very now, obvious. Right like here it is. Here we go. Yeah. And I don't see well, it. Add a note. Like, Let's see what it looks like. Add a little to-do list. Maybe like. By the way, the notes list. didn't appear until I hit add note, by the way. It didn't like, appear, but and that's so weird. All right, so add note. I'm gonna say eggs, bacon, uh, uh, Chihuahua, because he's licking me right now uh, off screen, trying to lick like my hands while I type. Omelet. <laughs> uh, uh, cheese. And then, so can I leave longer notes? It's it looked like there was a way to leave. Oh, you know what though? That's one note. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, you can color say, code them. I think you uh, can check it. Click on the people. I'm curious how granular the. Um, oh. Oh, oh, that saves it. What? No. That's changing something. It means I think that's changing public versus private. Shared, public versus and that's not very clear. That's not clear either. Again, this should not say save. It should say public, private, public, private. Like people understand from a UX perspective mm -hmm. that there is now dynamic saving. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, cool idea. I mean, I, I definitely see, I definitely like it. Right. I think a little bit of UX, you know, um, you know, uh, upgrades would probably be helpful, but the core of it's pretty interesting, you know, because many times to your point, like a lot of people do work directly on WordPress and sometimes we can overcomplicate this. We have WordPress, we have Trello, we have Jira, we have Basecamp, we have all these other ways we're trying to attack, track simple tasks. Right. But sometimes that can overcomplicate the situation. Like just have a list in WordPress. Yeah. What, uh, any other let's see what else we got that have stood out so here's a really interesting one i think we need to look at this one so robbie over at beaver builder threw this one out oh, this I've is from the beaver one. builder team called assistant have you used this i when i was doing when i was doing beaver builder stuff i loved assistant but we got away from beaver builder just because of uh you know with really really big large sites um it just started getting uh it the caching was like for us anyway but um, i don't get into that uh here we go assistant uh is it called beaver builder assistant it's called assistant it, it, the it's there plug and slash assistant it's right here there it is yep yep that's it the problem was and this is just again like for everyone also this is kind of like frustrating for me um it's not it's not um the plugin developers fault it's that people will try to rank so i type assistant look how all these other plugins come up except for the one we're looking for and this um, is literally the slug as assistant so yeah. i would think this should be the number one you yeah know? all right don't get so me started assistant, about the repo I know. Don't get me started about the repo. <laughs> don't even get me started. Well, let's save that for another show. <laughs> so when you visit the site, so usually there's an admin toolbar and I'll be honest, I like assistant because for us, we would, I would use it where I'm like, okay, this is WordPress stuff, but you know, Yoast adds something, gravity formats, something customized is added by WordPress itself. Uh, this is by WordPress. Why do I need, and again, you know, the WordPress admin toolbar was made when WordPress was a, like a strictly a blogging system, right? Why do I need comments in the admin toolbar? Like a comment's such a high value thing. And, and I'll give, I'll give actually people one of my pro tips is I, we have a decision tree when I join orgs and we decide to build systems and at Sotheby's, Sotheby's at um, the journal and uh, news corp, we borrowed from Spotify and it was, if it is going to be changed by the lowest level user and used daily, it's an option. Is it only going to be, so like something like comments, right? It's only going to be reviewed once a day by one specific person, remove from the toolbar and add it as an option for that person's use case. Mm -hmm. And so that's like a lot of this stuff, like add new. Victor has deep thoughts on the toolbar. <laughs> no, but how I'm talking, I'm trying to give him a, it, UX, it. a UX UI education, right? Yeah, and yeah, so if I get you think it. about it, you're only. I'm sure there's a plugin to modify this too, you know? Right. But I'm saying like, as people start to, and this is why things like assistant come about because, and this is what it does. It adds this nice little thing here. So this is assistant. I'll, I'll run through because I've done it before. And so assistant adds this little pencil. 
And so, you know, yeah. What are, so let's assistant. Yeah. It basically, let's just give the uh, hot, cause I didn't know what it does. And I don't think it's even yeah. clearly obvious when you get into it, but it's basically an everyday productivity tool. lets you navigate your WordPress site and handle quick tasks without needing to go to the admin. So it brings it yep. to the front end, but what can we actually do here? So the same way that I can go instead of going home and this is, you know, some users, they get confused. Oh, I have to go to a home page about me to do this. If you end up going the way you do an assistant, I'll go to visit site. Um, and I'll, I have my assistant open. The little pencil stays here. Um, you could see, uh, libraries. So you can like, if you connect pro, you get libraries of objects from, uh, WordPress, but all your media is here. Um, I'll get rid of this, these apps out of here. Um, you can view all your posts. I can go to my pages and all my pages are listed right here. And so I navigate and I can change the title here, or I can go right to the page and view it. And so I can edit all these things in the assistant instead of having to go through the admin columns approach. So it's just, it's just hopefully a way to make you more efficient as you're working through your site, working through as your content yeah. without having to flip back and forth. I like it. It's kind of a neat, different kind of a workflow way. It looks nice too. It looks neat. It looks, well, uh, it looks polished. You know what I mean? And to show you, we actually, um, and this is like, they were a client of mine. This site uses Beaver Builder, which um, Beaver Builder with assistant and the only people that get assistant are the designers because the designers hated the admin columns. And so that's how I found assistant where I was like, so now the designers, they go in and this is great for designers. Like, so the designers go in and they go and do all their Beaver Builder work, they publish, and then we have inline editing for the um, marketing and product teams. And so you can use it on big sites like this. Uh, yeah. and, and that way, because like if you see this site, like it's a very, you know, attractive, um, like 3D printing site. And so they, they use this tool. Yeah, I, I really like, I like plugins and themes or whatever. I like things that take the kind of traditional workflow of WordPress and and do exactly what it's trying to do, right? Improve, improve the efficiency and productivity of it. Like just flip it upside down and try to do it completely different because we're so used to working with WordPress in a certain way. Um, but that's not, you know, things like this can make your life way more efficient depending on how you like, like to work with your site and your content, you know? Yeah, so it's neat to see these because this can also line up how the core of WordPress could potentially say, hey, that's an interesting idea and start heading in that direction, you know? So um, if, if there's enough traction or if people are really drawn to it. So I, I like seeing this because it's, you know, kind of changing the idea of how we work with our sites. And the, and the other thing too, that's nice. If I had reusable blocks in here, it lists all the reusable blocks that are available. And that's really great on the front end, not just in the editor. Cause some people, you know, for people that are using Beaver Builder, you know, they don't use, I haven't used Beaver Builder in a while, but they don't use the editor as, you know, like they don't use the, the, core editor. They're using Beaver Builder, right? And so people in Beaver Builder are used to editing on the front end. So this continues that experience and they get reusable blocks. And, and I like here too, another thing that I saw is a way to organize, Brad. So you can actually, I, I, there's a way to get labels. So if anyone uses a Mac, and I like that they kind of borrowed from this, the Mac allows, so if I go to the page, I can apply color labels. So you know how in the, at the Mac, you can do blue, green, orange in your finder. It allows that too. And so we could divide teams by who owns what pages. And so in the MakerBot That's organization, neat. there's people who own the product pages. There's people who own the blog pages. There's people who own testimonial support. And we even made a custom role, which I guess going to another plugin, let me add one here. One of my, I'm gonna plug in one of mine. You could use something I really love, uh, publish press, capabilities it's my favorite capabilities plugin now um and so if you install this right and if you want to play around like if we were we were talking about this before about locking things down um what i love about publish press capabilities is that uh and where does it add itself under users no what hold on a second now i'm confused publish press capabilities edit roles there it goes under oh adds capabilities top level that does annoy me um, but I can go and change the roles, capabilities. I can do editor features, admin features. It and it exposes all of those admin menus. Again, that's the pro. But like you can do profile features. You can like restrict what they're allowed to edit in their profiles. But the main thing for local user, anyone working, I can go and add a new user, and I'm going to call this user um, editor only, and it's editor at you know um, abstractwp.com. Uh, and I'll just leave it as that. I'll make them an editor, add new user. And now if I test this user, I view as that user. And so I can go in and I go and review every plugin, by the way. And I go and say, 
So for example, the redirection plugin, actually I don't want to blast them, but certain plugins that have an admin capability, they forget to make it admin only. And then I log in as a subscriber and they have that capability. And so that's another thing I go recommend. Yeah, it's like, just so terrifying. Right, <laughs> which no, and and but that's the thing. Most developers it happens. don't I mean that's yeah. that's why you gotta so, you know use trusted plugins and make sure yeah. there's you know competent devs that are behind it or else some major admin feature ends up in, in front of a subscriber and you got a major problem. Yeah. And so I go and, and when I make a new site, I go and I'll do subscriber. And then we go through and review every single, um, you know, uh, page. And that's much easier with like, you know, now you can start to use uh, tools such as. Um, user switching. Uh, or visual regression testing to go and mm. test every single user role with each screen in the mm -hmm. admin to find a diff. And that's what we do. We do, we take screenshots and then put them all through and we go, wait, why is this different? And why is this added on plugin install? And so that's, we go to, I bet and, that's something a lot of people are not doing visual regression testing on the dashboard with different it, user we roles. We do because that, because what right. we got. And oh, I like it. I just think well. that's like a pro that's a, that's a definitely a pro move. That a lot of people that's aren't even probably stuff. You thinking about. That, guys. Right. Yeah. You can borrow that folks. Uh, and that's so, some 4d chess over there. Victor. I like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, so look, but here's the other thing, subscriber, right? Why does a subscriber, why do they get to see the site health? Uh oh, Brad, why? I don't know who built this plugin. <laughs> who built this plugin? No, and then like, okay, and that, but that's fine. Everything else though, okay, great. I'd say all this is good, but this is why you really have to test these user roles. And people don't think about, oh, I'm missing the chat, by the way. What? Extensible. Oh, by the way, yes, it is, Igor. Yes, it is. The documentation's not great, but all the classes are extendable. The one oh. thing I will say, Victor, you got to read. You got to read the questions for everyone oh, sorry. listening that has no idea what he just asked that you sorry. answered. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, All right. I don't. Can you hear me? All right. Sorry. There we Am go. Am I back? No. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if everyone heard that or just me, but you basically just kept saying sorry over and over for like the last two minutes. <laughs> it, no, you know what happened? But your, voice, your mouth was moving, so I thought maybe they were hearing what you were saying. I don't no, know. No, I'm sorry about that. It, for my, I'm using these really great headphones that the minute I say certain words, it wants to use the S-I-R-I -I lady over on my phone, not on uh, my Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. And so okay. these are these awesome headphones. All right. As I was saying, you can expand. Yes, there's, there's grokable code from it's very grokable code from Fastlane media they do a great job and that's why we we're able to get the makerbot job this was done by the way for folks in 2016. this site was built in 2016 i haven't touched it in six years and they're still going strong using pantheon um with like you know uh assisted upgrades all that stuff and they do a great job sorry everyone very, for very that cool. weird thing <laughs> no i loved it i hope it i hope it stays because uh, that'd be a good sound clip um but yeah we do a live it's fun we're 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 loose we're silly um but yeah i mean we've covered a lot of plugins i mean there's many more and i think we could keep going but we're kind of wrapping up the show i think i do want to kind of end on with some of the advice that we we started off with a little bit which is you know how do you find the right plugins or how do you trust the right plugins or how, you know where do you go if there's 50 different options of of the same thing you're looking to do and and it really comes down to just like when you buy products in real life it's the same thing with the plugin right look at the reviews Look at what people are saying. Look at how recent those reviews are. Are they from five years ago? Or are they from, you know, in the last few months, you know, this year or last year? Look at, you know, how many active installations. It's not the only metric, but it is a important metric. Obviously, the more people using a plugin, the more likely that it is is built properly and very stable and has a good team behind it. Um, you know, ask the community is extremely um, open and friendly, and we all have different experiences with plugins and different things we can recommend. Many of the plugins we talked about today, you know, Victor and I hadn't heard of, you know, which is great and they look awesome, you know, so share knowledge, ask if you don't know, get involved in the community, get in the Slack, you know, with WordPress Slack channels or post status or some other place. Um, and just ask, we're all, we all want to share advice and there's new plugins popping up every day, which are super interesting. I really hope someday we can get a, 
a section on wordpress.org that has trending plugins right because it's oh that'd be great it's kind of like here's all the new ones and here's the popular ones but what's trending like if there's something that just came out that's kind of really getting hot but it doesn't have a ton of downloads because it's new but trending that'd be a great way to discover new plugins right like i would imagine there's a lot of ai plugins trending right now because it's such a hot topic i also wonder if that'd be a way for the wordpress organization if anyone is listening to identify new people to reach out to, to bring into the WordPress community. Because one of the issues, you know, as we like sometimes talk about is that like, they're not, and um, uh, I think David down in Florida uh, talks about this all the time about like, we need younger people in WordPress. And so, mm-hmm. uh, by the way, the reason that I do want to bring something up, but like Brad said, look for reviews, look for installations. Look, something like CPTUI, you guys know Brad, he wrote the book on plugins, right? It makes it easy to like to do the job. And like he has stars, he has great reviews, but I'm not saying don't dismiss other plugins. So you could look at something like right. airplane mode, right? And this is actually one of my favorite plugins um, that I use sometimes when I travel, I'll set up airplane mode. Um, it controls loading of external files and developing locally. And so it removes external JS, but then I'll even make it where like a loads a local jQuery, certain plugins for things I'm using. But if you look at it, it has been updated in three years, version 0.25. It only has like one review, right? But if you go look at it and you go and click these people's profiles, John Blackburn, Google this guy. He knows a thing or two, right? Go and Google um, Mark Jaquith. They know a thing or two. And so don't get stalled just because, oh, no one's using this. This must be, it must be terrible. Dig a little deeper and you'll find like an, like a sleeper hit or as they call it like a dope b-side in records that no one is listening to or playing with and not, i'm not saying fork it i mean go ahead fork it maintain it make it your own but that's the beauty but also you could find these plugins that no one's using and be like oh this actually is a really great tool um and then the other thing i like to do is kind of like when i used to be a dj i wouldn't go by artist i would go by record label and so I like to go and look at the author and go, what other, this, oh, I like the way this guy codes. I like the way this guy does things um, or this person. And I'll go and say like, hey, let me go see what plugins they have. And that's like, um, I forgot from Know the Code. Um, and I only know people's like handles, but um, there's a Know the Code. She, You go through hers and she disabled her old WP debug, debug plugin. And then when I went through her, like, you know, she had her new WP debug plugin and it was on her page. So that's another thing too. People like some, there's not an elegant way for some developers don't know how to tell you, hey, I stopped maintaining this, go try my other plugin because you might not even be checking all your emails. Um, so that's the beauty mm-hmm. of this metadata in WordPress. In yeah. Organization. Yeah. If you go back to your dashboard and go to your, your edit your profile real quick, I'll give one final tip here. And this is- Oh, um, in this, in here. Uh, yeah, go back to your local, your local one. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, now go back was, to oh, edit okay. your, no, no, no. Edit your user profile. So this is my final tip. And this is, I think helpful, uh, you know, if you're working on multiple sites, so on your dev site, on your local, whatever, change the color, change the color, change the pattern, oh. pick one that, you know, every time you see that, you know, you're local or every time you see that, you know, you're on production, right? So I use ectoplasm a lot, um, because it's probably the weirdest one and it stands out. Right. So I use that on a lot of my uh, production sites. So I know if I see that ectoplasm color scheme without even looking at what site I'm on, I know I'm on a production site. I need to be very careful. So when you work with multiple setups, testing out plugins locally in a dev environment, you know, use those uh, user profile colors just to help distinguish. I think there's even plugins that can put notices in the toolbar as well, like staging, dev, production. But yeah. that way you really know quickly, just visually, where you're at when you're playing around with plugins. So you don't accidentally install something on your production site that you're didn't mean to do and you're just testing so you know desktop server which is now discontinued used to have that as an add-on where it would allow you if the, whole the door, bar would like go green or yeah, red it would or, be red it'd be red yeah. green so you could choose you know dev staging and i i that is actually the, and that's something when we were at news corp that was one of the first things we did was to like put a little thing up that says you are not in production or you're yep. whatever because you really need you to start like, juggling a lot yeah. of sites. It's 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 really yeah. it's 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 amazing how quickly like a mistake can happen, and you're 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 on the production site, and you just changed a you know edited a file or installed you know ran a search and replace, and oh I'm not even on dev, I'm not local, yeah. because you're flipping back and forth. So you know do something a little bit of that just to help protect and hopefully make it easier. But uh, this was a fun show. Really appreciate everybody sharing their their plugins. There's there's others we weren't able to get to, but I think we shared a good healthy amount, and hopefully got the ideas flowing. Um, 
but yeah, uh, thanks for joining us today. If you have any additional plugins, please uh, throw them out there. We'll probably have some some more shows next week. We're going to have our uh, our unfiltered WordPress Friday Hangout, which is our open show. So anyone's uh, anyone can hop on and join the stream. Bring topics, bring plugins, bring plugins you like, maybe plugins you don't like. Well, come come hang out with us. We want somebody. Bring your dogs. Bring your pets. Bring your friends. Bring your cat. A lizard. WordPress bring Friday cat. Hangout unfiltered. Unfiltered next friday and with that for victor i'm brad williams for the wordpress friday hangout hashtag wp friday catch us next week have a fun and safe weekend everybody and get out there and enjoy the sun thanks y'all i'll be watching for that sound clip and my continual embarrassment (laughs) all right thanks everybody later